Hey guys, Microtech Mark here with Admiral Centralized Microtech Management. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to get a Microtech Virtual Router, or a CHR, which is a cloud-hosted router, running inside of the Proxmox hypervisor. So at Admiral, we use Proxmox all the time, such as for VPN concentrators to centralize our services, to speed testing other Microtechs, to lab environments, and more. Unfortunately, Microtech doesn't provide an image of a CHR that Proxmox can use. They only have raw, VMDK, and a bunch of other image types that Proxmox doesn't work with. So if you've never set up a CHR on Proxmox before, it can be pretty confusing, a little bit difficult, and sometimes even downright frustrating. But fear not, it's actually incredibly easy once you've figured out the process of how to do it. And that's precisely what we're gonna share with you today and show you how to do. So there's a ton of video tutorials on how to set up Proxmox. So I'm going to assume that you've already got a working Proxmox installation and can get to your GUI on your browser. So here's where to go and what to do when you're ready to deploy a Microtik CHR on your existing Proxmox. So the first thing we need to do is get the virtual machine image from Microtik's website onto your Proxmox server. So we're gonna start by opening the shell here and then uh, you'll have the command down here in the description if you just want to copy and paste it. But basically, you're going to do a wget on the URL to get Microtix CHR image off the website. If you decide that you want to use something other than the 648.6, you just need to replace this 648.6 here and here with whatever version that you'd like to use instead, for example, 7.1.3. So the next thing we need to do is install the unzip package. Uh, just in case you don't have it already, you can run apt install unzip. We'll see there we needed to install that in order to be able to unpack that zip file that Microtik uh, compressed that file with so that it could be e more easily transferred over the network. Now that we've installed unzip to the hypervisor's operating system, we can run that unzip command against the file that we downloaded from Microtik. And again, these commands will be available down in the description. And so now we've unpacked and unzipped that CHR image, and it's ready for us to do a conversion on it. So the next step here is to convert this image from the raw file that we downloaded from Microtik to something that Proxmox can actually use, which is called a QCOW2. Uh, I can't tell you why Microtik doesn't provide a QCOW2, but they don't. So we'll just make our own using this Kimu image convert uh, command. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty of creating this virtual machine and getting it running. What you're going to do is click on the create VM button. And if you have multiple nodes like I do, you need to pick the one that you want to load it on. But in your case, you may only have one node, uh, in which case there's nothing to choose here. Now your virtual machine ID is an arbitrary number. This starts at 100 and goes up from there. I've created some virtual machines and deleted them. So you see that my VM ID automatically adjusts to 103. I'm just gonna put in here 1001. Uh, it's really whatever number you'd like to use, completely arbitrary. Now, whatever VM ID you do use here, you'll wanna keep that ha number handy because we're gonna need that later on when we do the disk formatting for using with the CHR QCOW2 image we just created. Next up, pick a name for your virtual machine. This is completely arbitrary. It can be whatever name you'd like it to be. In my case, I'm just going to put test CHR. Uh, cannot have spaces in the names. Just keep that in mind. If you want to use a hyphen or some other character, that's fine. You'll notice that if I have a bad name, uh, the, the box there highlights in red means it's an invalid name for the virtual machine. Now, if this is a virtual machine that you always want to power on when your Proxmox server reboots, uh, what you can do is click on the advanced tab down here and then ensure that start at boot is selected so that it'll automatically power on if your Proxmox hypervisor ever gets rebooted. All right, so if you're ready to continue, hit next. And on this screen, you'll notice that we've got a red uh, ISO image here. We're just going to change this radio selection from using a CD to not using any media at all for loading the OS. Once you've selected that, hit next. On this system screen, you don't make any changes and just hit next. 
Now on the disks section here, we do have some critical changes to update. First thing we want to do is change this SCSI number from zero to one. That's all we really need to do, but you'll also notice down here that the disk size in gigs is set to 32 gigs. That's a default for this version of Proxmox, and it should be made clear that the disk for a CHR does not need to be very large. Uh, by default, it comes at 64 megs, and if you do something like drop this down to one gig, that'll work just fine and give you plenty of extra space to use for packet captures or any other images that you need to store on there. Um, and keep in mind that also the maximum size available to a Microtik CHR as of today is 16 gigs. So that really, if you put 32 gig, you're just wasting 16 gig of space because it can't take advantage of that. Keep in mind, you can always resize this and add capacity later. So for example, if I make it one gig now and I want to make it 10 gig later, uh, later on I can adjust the settings of this virtual machine after shutting it down, uh, add some disk space. And when I power it back on, it'll automatically resize the disk to the larger disk space. So we're gonna go with one gig on this one and hit next. So now we're looking at CPU and you can really set whatever this makes sense for your deployment to be. Uh, you can certainly just leave the defaults of one socket and one core, and this will be a not very powerful CHR. Uh, if you'd like to give it more sockets and more cores, just make sure that that lines up with the capabilities of your physical hardware. So for example, in this environment, this is a i7-2600. So we've got one socket and it actually has four cores. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to four cores for a second to show you that that's how that works. On some of my production CHRs that we run Proxmox on, some of those CHRs have two cores, two physical CPUs, and 14 cores. So you can see here, we can jump this up and we'll get a whole bunch of virtual CPUs that this guy's allowed to use. But for my purposes today, this is just a lab environment. I'm going to select one socket with two cores. It's going to give it plenty of horsepower to be just a lab CHR that we can play with and mess around with. Once you set the CPU sockets and cores that are right for your system, hit next. So this one's another it depends selection. Uh, the amount of memory to give your CHR really does depend on whether it's going to be production or lab. In this case, we're just testing it out. So I'm going to just put 128 megs of RAM here. But just for some additional information, if I was using this as a VPN concentrator, I would probably add about one gig of RAM per thousand PPP connections. In another case, if this is a router OS 7 CHR, I'd probably bump it up to 256 megs of RAM minimum. Keep in mind, again, this is an easily adjustable value after you've started the virtual machine. So we can set it low for now, and we can always bump it up later and give it more resource access. So once you've set your memory, let's hit next. So on the network tab, we're not going to make any changes. We're just going to click next. So on the confirmation summary screen, you can see here we've got all of the info that we selected and very, very important here. You can see this start after created checkbox is not clicked. You want to make sure you do not click that button because we have some more changes to make before starting this virtual machine up. If you accidentally put this start after created on or turn on the VM before we finish this tutorial, you will absolutely have some trouble getting it fixed. And I highly suggest that if you get to that point, don't try and uh, fix it. Instead, just alert the, delete the virtual machine and start over again from the beginning because it's much easier. I talk from experience here. It's a very painful process to fix it. It is much easier to just do it right in the first place. So as long as start after created is not selected, let's go ahead and hit finish. So now we can see that my test CHR has been created. It's a virtual machine that's available here to be manipulated and I can turn it on. But before I do, what I need to do is hook up that image that we converted to the QCOW2 to be available to the disk of this virtual machine. So in order to do that, we've got to go back into the shell again. So I'm going to select my hypervisor, go into its shell, get a command line, and again, You'll be able to see this down in the description, but we're going to do a QM import disk. And what I need to do is replace this 120 that you see in my line here with the virtual machine's ID. So I numbered my 
virtual machine here, 1001. So I'm replacing that QM import disk with 1001. And if you also use a different version than the 648.6, you'll need to replace that version here too in order to get this command to run successfully. But when I do the QM import disk on my virtual machine ID, you'll see some stuff go through here. And what you can see there is that it, it loaded the 64 megs of disk into this unused zero local disk um, mount point. So what we're looking for here is that it successfully imported the disk, and that means that we can move on to the next step. Now, here's the trickiest part that really confused me the first couple of times that I did this. So I'm going to walk you through this step by step. Click on your virtual machine again while it's powered off and open up the hardware section. Here in hardware, what we're going to do is go to unused disk zero and double click on it. Once it opens here, we don't do anything else. Just click add. The next thing we're going to do is select this SCSI disk one and we're going to click detach here at the top. And then we confirm to detach this disk. And now you're going to see a new unused disk zero popped up. We're going to highlight that unused disk zero and hit remove at the top. One more time, confirm yes. And now we're almost done. This virtual machine is now set up to use the disk the way that it's supposed to in order for it to be compatible with Proxmox. We've just got one more thing to do. Here under options, we've got to set it to use that disk. And so it won't have done that by default because we didn't set it up that way. We come in here and what you're looking for here is boot order. So if we open up boot order, you'll see that we have a couple of default selections, but our SCSI zero is not only not selected, but it's also the last priority. So what you wanna do is click to enable that and then drag and drop this left icon hamburger menu up to the top so that it's the first item. So now we're gonna boot from that SCSI zero that we just created in order to get this virtual machine to power on correctly. Hit okay. And now finally, we can turn this VM on. And what I like to do is hit the console and then hit start. And now we can watch as the system boots up and watch the post screens. If you've resized the disk from the 64 megs, you'll see that uh, very quickly it will do a resizing disk. Mine flopped through so fast that we may not have seen it. But at this point, we've created our Proxmox CH, MicroTik CHR. And if we log in with admin and no password, you'll see here that I get prompted to view the license agreement. I'm gonna say that I've seen it a couple hundred times before, so I'm gonna hit no. And at this point, I now have a working MicroTik CHR that's connected to my internal network. And there we have it. A MicroTik CHR is now running on your Proxmox installation. Now, remember, if you're going to add any public IP addresses to this CHR, be sure to secure your router with a default firewall. And I suggest adding a new user and disabling the default admin account, or at a minimum, putting a strong password on that admin account. If you need some help, finding a good firewall, you can check out Microtik's wiki, or you can look at one of our other videos that we've got on best practices on firewall. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you, be sure to like and subscribe. And in our next video series, we'll be showing you how to build a simple and complex Microtik CHR lab based on Proxmox without the need for a network emulator like EVNG or GNS3. I'm Microtik Mark, and thanks for watching. If you're looking for Microtik centralized management, be sure to check out admiralplatform.com. See you next time.